sense? Okay, that's fine. Let's go for it then. Right. We're on. We go this way. Downstream of the river, right? right? Yeah. So to, to just break the water level, we put the steps. Yeah. So that the okay. uh, so the, 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 the gradient, that that yeah. that sharp drop, is actually spread out yeah, over the distance. So yeah. maybe that's something that Jim Allen we should speak to about. I love Jim. Yeah, yeah. I've actually I've, I've designed something similar to Jim um, down in the forest. So it's kind oh, of right, stuff. Right. That Jim will know exactly what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Brilliant. No. Yeah. It looks to me like a bit more of a channel. When, when you have a heavily incised channel like this, and you've got very, very steep banks, um, the, the, the range of marginal habitat that you've got is obviously very limited. You're going from a, a, a terrestrial um, habitat almost immediately, and then drops down to the, to the river. You've basically got land species, then a sudden drop. We've got a few little bits and pieces. There's some sedges down there. Um, there's some there's parsnip on the edge down there, but but mostly this is this is essentially terrestrial habitat. Bang, there's the river. We were talking about um, stuff that's ended up in the river that isn't a natural addition to it. However, it creates environments and turbulence in the water to, that, will, that will encourage the growth of the to little microclimates the, behind it. With, with habitat, if you've got a really uniform channel, it's all the same, then you've got one type of habitat. If you've got pockets of fast flowing water yeah. and slow flowing water and uh, water that's flowing in, you know, in different directions and you've got variations in, in depth, then all of a sudden you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven maybe different habitats occupying that, that same space. Yeah. So, so biodiversity really heavily relies on physical diversity yeah. within the channel, of course. Yeah. Um, the other thing being that if you've got bits of tree, you know, if you've got bits of woody debris yes. in the channel, then, that, then that's really important for um, invertebrates that you get shredding invertebrates that will actually sort of chomp away at the, at the wood itself. It's also um, provides really good cover for fish. Um, if it's quite brashy sort of material, even if it's sort of bits of brambles and stuff, it's it's a refuge for, for younger fish to hide from predators. Um, so it's actually bits of debris in the river are really really important. Yeah. yeah. It's just be, it's just sort of gauging what is um, useful debris and what is rubbish. Yeah. Of course. And, yeah. And it can be. And that was where tricky. Jim was saying that you yeah. know a lump of plywood in the river it's probably not best left there even though it might be creating an environment however a large lump of concrete like that's in there up. such as that lump there yeah. you would leave that because essentially it's like little landmark yeah, yeah. 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 really yeah i've seen four, uh, yeah, four people this yeah. morning i did last year absolutely fleeting glimpse of one myself a lot further down and um meeting the first sort cat that cat or cat you know, yeah. don't know when a cat's going to be the last time we were down here, there was a kingfisher flying up and down here. So, so it's, it's still, it's still there. It's still there. There's life in the old girl yet. Yeah, but, there is. But absolutely. That's the, that sort of stuff in those bushes there. That's what we want to get rid of. We want to get rid of. But I mean, I mean, yeah, here. exactly. I mean, obviously, you know, plastic, um, 
is, is your immediate you know, thing to be getting rid of yeah. because it's, it's, it's essentially it's not going to be adding anything no. of value no. to habitat, it's, it's just right. It's when you're up here, it doesn't look, doesn't look as bad because when you're down there and you see it's all hanging in the bushes here, you can actually see up the river, it just looks like a sea of white bags. I think it just goes to show that people aren't necessarily inherently you know, bad when it comes to throwing stuff yeah. uh, into rivers, it's just it looks like a rubbish dump. Do you know, in, in, in a good example, is when I work at Glastonbury and we have designated areas where people put their rubbish. But if you just get two or three bags put in the wrong area, people will go, just find chuck rubbish out of it. You've got to train them like cats. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, and, 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 and within hours, it's this massive pile. Jim Allen was um, from the um, farm agency was saying that, that it was good to create some weirs at some point. Obviously a river that needs the 60, 40 light and shade. Yeah. Now, on that basis, he was saying that if we did some, some tree surgery up in the more wooded part and use the wood from that to create weirs in the river. That's what his Yeah, uh, yeah, although, although rather than being, think of them as, 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 as weirs exactly, but but just some, some, some flow deflectors. Yes, flow deflectors. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was going to worry how big they are. It would surprise me. I think I think that's probably mink. You think that's mink, do you? Yeah. 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 That's a shame. We don't really want mink, do we? I don't know. No, mink aren't, aren't good because they hit your water boat population. Yeah. 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 So a large flat stone like this on the bed you should really in this river be able to pick this up and this should be crawling with with fruity crawlies there you should have little caddis flies that have built themselves little cases you might find um, eggs you might find uh, mayfly larvae sort of crawling around mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. um, and obviously there's not a lot there not a good sign well it, it would be it would be interesting to I mean, what we'll do is, is sort of compare what, what data the environment agency's got on, on water quality and invertebrates and, and sampling and, and see what actually, uh, if the data they've got is matching up with what we're looking at here. Sure. Okay. Um, a pool's scoured out. Yes. It's lifted this material out. Yeah. And it's, and, and you've actually got, I mean, it's, it's still quite compacted with sort of fine sediment. But, but actually, that, but, you know, you've actually got a real range of, of sizes of gravel and material here. Mm. Now, if you imagine this was all sorted, what's really good for the trout, the spawning, is to have that kind of sorted gravel. So, let's imagine we've got... They like it sorted, actually, all well, the sections. Yeah, well, the well but because you see the gravel we've got here, this is this is all lots of different sizes of gravel all mixed up together yeah. with a lot of fine sediment. You see me kicking around and see how muddy yeah, that yeah. is. Oh, I now, thought they'd like something. They'd if, you, like if, you, if you were to have... Um, Something like seeing about flow deflectors here, causing some scour in the bed, and this was all lifted up. Yeah. Now obviously, the finer material will be transported the furthest. The larger stones will drop out first, then and then you know that, that, that's what we want to sort of. Yeah, 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 what yeah. I mean, somewhere within that range, the will be, will will be the easiest spot for the yeah. trout to cut its nest, its yes. red, to spawn. Yeah. Got it. When you've got all this fine material in there, right? Now the the, the, the problem is that. Any eggs that are laid in there can get smothered by that fine material and suffocate. Um, so it's why really, it's, it's really important to have this structure in the river to help sort the gravel. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Which, yeah, which yeah. Na naturally, you know, in, you know in, in a completely untouched natural system, you'd have trees falling into the river, left, right, centre, and this would just be an ongoing process. So we've got some, uh, you know, little, little, little pool of deeper water here, and we've got this overhanging. Carrot, this, this, this sedge that's just overhanging the water and you, 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 it's just trailing in there. Now that's fantastic cover for, for a fish, for, for trout in particular, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's something they can dart under and, and up a nice and sort of comfortable and safe under yeah. there. 
Um, away it's, from herring. And uh, yeah, from, from uh, predatory birds. Um, and it, no, it's also it's it's uh, it's, a, it's a great sort of um, interface for for invertebrates as well. You know, when you have a lot of invertebrates, their life uh, they have a, a life stage in the water, a life stage out of the water. I understand. And having that that interface between the two is, is really important. And is it easy to encourage that into the river? Yes. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah. But, 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 but this this kind of sedge, it, this is kind of just how it grows. You know, it will it will it will spread out. And then it will overhang down got it. into the channel. So if you've got, but also, I mean, also it's doing quite a nice job of actually holding these banks oh, together. Holding the banks together, yeah, of course it will. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's where you've got these quite steep banks. Um, just look at this. This, one, this, is, this is interesting as well. Yeah, so this is where I think this, this river may have been dredged in the past. Yeah, quite possibly. I think uh, I've never seen a. a you see, see a gravel scene here. Yes. Which would be the riverbed. Ah, right. So that your riverbed should probably be about there. Right. And I mean, because you know, naturally, these these the the yeah you know, the rivers here would have braided all the way across, and over the years, it's probably been all the way across this floodplain at different at different times over the you know centuries and millennia that it's, it's been flowing here. And um, and and, it, and during that time, it's deposited all this gravel. Um, so one of the, one of the good things about having the seam here, it does mean that when you've got a bit of bank erosion here, you're actually introducing more gravel into the channel, which is great. Yes. Um, but it does also show you that the, that the river has been dredged. Yeah. The, you know, you're, we're now down here, and the riverbed doesn't actually have its own natural gravel seam. Gravel seam, no, I understand. Magnet fishing, actually. What's that all about? I'll show you. So we got some rope, went straight down the river with all the kids, didn't we? <laughs> went magnet fishing underneath the bridge. And uh, yeah, it was, it was spot on. We pulled out all sorts of stuff, didn't we? Five um, pence, an yeah. aluminium yeah. ladder that we got yeah. tangled up on. Yeah, I pulled out a ladder, which was quite cool. A set of steps, you know, that was it. But we were quite determined we might pull out a load of syringes on it. Can <laughs> <laughs> you imagine a, a tree is falling in the river? Yep. So, as the, 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 the water is forced around the tree, you'll get a, an area of scour where you might get this sort of clean gravel, this gravel sorting. Then in the sort of shadow behind the tree, the yeah. bit downstream, yeah. you'll get slack of water of course. and you'll get a build-up of sediment there. Yes. Uh, which which is no it's not a bad thing at no. all. What what you're doing is you're is you're separating it out and you're, you've got an area of kind of managed deposition. You've got you've got sort of one habitat there and another habitat there. That's, you know, so actually, actually these sort of build-ups of, of sediment in, in certain areas is really important for burrowing mayfly and, and, yeah. and uh, um, brook lamprey and, and all sorts of species okay. need that, that area, you know. But similarly, similarly, there are species that need that kind of clean gravel bed. Clean gravel bed as well, yeah. You know, so, so separating the two out. So where it's really where it's all about having these different habitats, isn't it, for these, for these different... You know, it's just it's all, it's all about diversity. Yeah, diversity. Diversity. Just having, yeah. Basically, if, you, if you've got one word to, to sum up, diversity, what do you mean yeah. to be having a healthy river yeah. is diversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, can, I totally, totally understand that now. So the Wild Trout Trust, um, we, we offer this Mayfly in the Classroom scheme, whereby um, a local school can um, actually rear Mayfly nymphs in the tanks in the, in, in the classroom, learn about their life cycle. Um, and then actually at the end of the life cycle reintroduce them to the river which is great for the health of the river um, it's also really good for the kids to, to, to learn about the river and get involved and, and get an understanding of the ecosystem but most importantly it's, it's really cheap it's, it's only something like 15 pounds for the, for the whole kit um, and, and, and what, what, what is this you know, growing these flies what do they do for the river well they're, they're really they're really important um, i mean invertebrate life in, in, in general you know it's it, it's it's uh, for the for the food web of the, the whole river ecosystem they're, they're really important um, also shelving in roads all, 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 yeah, yeah. all, 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 all the fish yeah so it's not fish specific so exactly. we, we, we could do that in schools then, and like we could do that in schools yeah i mean it's going to have to be done in, in parallel with habitat works to make sure that once you introduce them you can actually have a self um Sort of supplying um, population, you know, so you've actually you're, you know, you're, you're putting them in and they're not just dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, but um, you know, it's, it's something to go along in parallel with doing community-based 
works here, it's just yep. going to get more and more people involved. Brilliant. Um, and at the same time, you know, continue to improve the health. Of yep, that's right, absolutely. And it educates kids as well, so they, they enjoy it. There we go. Yeah, it's our stick then. Yeah, cheers, dude. Right, you're right. So because because this section of the river here is, is much more kind of naturally meandering, you know, it's coming around the corner here, it's bending all the way around us. So you, you've actually got a much more natural shape to the channel. Now if this was a bit more fast flowing, what you would find is that on the inside of the bend you get deposition of the fine sediment on the outside you get a bit more scour and then from that scour you might get a bit more material lifted up and then deposited and you get this kind of pool and ripple so you start starting to form but it's not happening here because the weir on the other side of the bridge is holding the water up and slowing it all down so actually although you've got this nice shape which should lend really nicely to the river sort of sorting itself out it's being prevented from actually being as good as it can be by the weir structure there. Got it. Uh, what we should find is because we walk up round here is we should be able to really quite easily see the, the point at which the impoundment drowns out and we can see actually exactly how far up the river that weir is, is impounding the flows. Excellent. Yeah, let's go and have a look. What you notice in, in summer I imagine it's quite it's quite dark still, right? Correct, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that you've probably got enough material here that you could actually win quite a bit of material to use for, for, for yeah. habitat and hands. Just, and just echo what Jim Allen said. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and you don't necessarily want to be opening it up exactly for the sunlight, but just creating some little skylights, if you like, yeah. sure. to yeah. let some water in. There's a bit of concerns about what might happen with climate change and global warming, and shade is so important to keeping rivers cool, yeah. and, and a lot of fish, you know, they, they need the river to be cool because the, the warmer the water gets, the less dissolved oxygen there is available to them. You know. I'm actually stood on the, the roots of this tree and what you might go just about going out is how the river's moving slightly faster around the outside of this. Yeah, and I think we're still slightly impounded by that weir there. Yeah. So this isn't moving as fast as it could be. And certainly when we were downstream of the, the bridge and the river was really moving along mm -hmm. some pace. You know, if you imagine those conditions here, you'd get uh, a real scouring of the bed and fast flow water. And in the shadow of, of that, you know, it, it, uh, it basically, in the lee of this root system, you get a load of uh, deposition along there. And um, you know, if you if you had a, a real build-up of silt there and some light conditions on it, what you might find is that becomes habitat for emerging plants to to, to, to spring up. Spring up, you know, yeah. And, and you can actually again, it's it's about having, you know, creating two habitats out of one. Yes. Yeah. And the kind of woody debris works that you want to be kind of looking at in the river is really kind of mimicking this kind of thing you know so where naturally you're getting tree roots and overhanging branches that just in the water and think about how they interact with the, the river and this is just about kind of replicating that where we can and enhancing what's already here yeah of course working you know? on so what's already a there bit, a bit of direct sunlight on, on uh, shallower backfalls like this yeah. would really help to get things growing brilliant Right, there's another one. Do you want the football in that? No, no, no. You sure? No, I don't think I can do it tomorrow. We can try and fish it out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll just stop it out now. Might as well. We'll give it a kick over there, can't we? Can kick it back in then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. We were just talking with um, Colin, our mayor, with regard to the possibility of putting footpaths around that meander around with the river so that everybody can enjoy it. What's, mm. what's your, your view well, on I that? Well, think, I think it, it, it's, it's a really great idea, and, and I think you want to be uh, keeping in mind that if the footpath is on the inside side of the of, of, of any meanders in the river, yep. um, if you look at the, the river across here, you can see where you've got this steep cliffing bank because it's on the outside, yep. it's experiencing the erosion, and you can actually see all the deposition on this inside bank to where the river's come up and it's left this sort of sandy deposit everywhere. So here. it's rubbing it away there and putting it there. Yeah, so if you've got a path, it's going to be more 
on the inside. Secure on this side, yes. Yeah, but I mean, um, they're, they're talking that there's possibility of funding for, for that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's a good idea. Actually, those, those steep sandy banks there can be really important habitat for sand martins. Right, to yeah. tunnel yes. in there, you know. So, so actually having, if, you know, if, if you imagine that ended up with sand martins in it and you had a footpath here that people could walk along and see it. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing worth noting here, I think this is, this is Japanese knotweed, isn't it? That's got to go. Yeah. So, yeah. which is very, very difficult um, invasive plant. It's dead now. Real issue it for was there during the summer. Yeah, back, it? yeah, it's a real issue for um, for rivers because it grows so prolifically that it shades out the banks, out competes everything else. Right. In the, in the winter, in the it, it dies back to nothing and can leave the banks really exposed yeah. to, to to erosion. So we want that. Right. Out. We want that out. This 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 has to be. Um, so we we've seen evidence of Japanese knotweed and Himalayan Himalayan balsam. balsam. Mm -hmm. Himalayan balsam, very similar story. You know, it grows very prolifically and and then in the winter it just basically disappears um, so you can be left with bare soil which just it's gets washed straight away um, Japanese knotweed will need to be treated whilst it's growing yeah. right? in the best thing to do is you have to use you have to use pesticides oh really right okay. um, you can um, there are some skis where they actually inject it straight in or I think you, you can actually spray them with use things like um, uh, glycophate based pesticides but it actually breaks down in contact with water so it's not as bad as good just, but you would but to, whoever's dealing with it would have to have the um the right qualifications and stuff to operate um so maybe we need to water. speak to somebody about the, the these invasive plants on the river mm. so, got here is uh is on my finger there this is gam this is uh, gamorous that's a uh, freshwater shrimp um we've got this is a caddis uh, this is one with the, the this is one of the caseless uh, varieties. You can get ones that build little cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got some other little things here. I can't quite see whether those are. They might be um, olives. They might be olive, uh, which are like small mayflies, little uplands. And uh, and these, I think, are freshwater limpets. Yeah. Brilliant. So, which are a good. They're actually indicators of quite good quality water. So. What you might find is actually here, upstream of the industrial estate, you've actually got much um, better water quality. It backs up with this could indicate that there's that you've got quite um, nutrient-rich water. So whether that's farming, farming, or um, sewage connections, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's like just a stone. So there's still there's still something. <sighs> But but uh, but but nutrient enrichment is a uh, is an issue across the country. Um, but foam is that an indication? For foam, the foam can be can yeah. be an indication, um, particularly if it's. Uh, it's either if it's quite brown, the indication of it being uh, a nutrient issue, or whether it's quite white. I don't know which one's natural, yeah. which one's yeah, 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 natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Good enough. Okay. Okay. It's obviously just going to be they they put had to put something in because of the excessive runoff of water from the new estate. It um, looks but it, it looks a little bit like what they call it a, a sub a sustainable drainage yeah. system. Except um, it's actually stone lined and it's just going in a, a straight line. Straight just go straight to the river. river. Because if if that instead went through this reed bed, yes, then the, that reed bed would clean the water yes. as it went through. Um, and you also, you know, you have this this little bit of wetland habitat down here. Oh, well, it's something it might be worth just at some point having a look at, uh, like some of these large stones. Just if the water levels are low and you've got a big flat concrete structure here, yeah, then that might become something that's difficult for to get past. Yes, if, if you had a, had a dry summer. Yeah, 
I just want to see if I can waste that, if I can waste that stone out. Yeah, mate, it, 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 use medium. I might be able to just ping that out and then all those caddis fly. Yeah, that's cases will just end up back in the river. I'll see, that's what I might see. It's gone through a room. <laughs> well, that's going to flick me up. Maybe in the chops on the last lot of shit. Smash me glasses and put me into A&E. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. See, that's a proper conservationist, mate, that is. It's going the extra mile, isn't it? Yeah. Put that on the thing. Got some gloves on Yeah, I ain't got any gloves. No, no well, we will have tomorrow, won't we? I mean, we'll be all prepared for that. Yeah, we've just got to watch out, though, Dave, because this this isn't a focus of the shark. Yeah, this is, you've got to watch that. So we've got to watch out for Stop, that. you're milking it now. You're milking it. You, just, you know, you're going to kill you're it. You're videoing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> videoing. No, that's what we're doing. Careful, it's shark. <laughs> 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 Willows that we've, we've got along here. Someone, someone's obviously put these in at some point to help hold this bank together. They're very evenly spaced, and uh, and they've been they've been published back. Um, and uh, this is this is quite a sustainable way of, of holding, you know, of rev revetting banks because the the root system, although the trees themselves have been published back, the root system is still very dense under there. And the more you coppice it back, actually, the thicker that root system gets as it grows. So these banks are actually getting stronger with age. Also, the these whips that are, that are stemming up from it are a great material to use in, in habitat enhancement projects for, for rivers. Um, and it's a sustainable source because it's going to grow back every year. And using this, uh, especially in the winter when the sap's not rising in them, you can literally chop those off and drive them into the ground. And then when the spring comes around, they'll take root and um, eventually grow into to new trees. Well, done. Brilliant. Excellent. I need a hand. I need somebody to hold me, Gary. I need somebody to help me. Come here. It needs to be held. But it's no, no, But it's 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 another shit show. You've got relatively good water for you. Oh, well, that's that is good news, isn't it? We're being distracted now, aren't we, from the, from the technical yeah. stuff by Matt? <laughs> ring ring him out. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, a laugh of sympathy. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Such a shame. I missed it for the video. Oh, you're uh, you're in the crack as wet as well, Matt. <laughs> I'm not taking him off and ringing him. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm pleased about that. <laughs> just... It was an epic fall, though. It was like Mike said. It was almost. It was almost like <laughs> it was a oh, classic <laughs> river <laughs> face <laughs> bath. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> you know what I got? When I, when, I, when I got to the point of no return, I thought I am actually going to go under. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just happy now. You know, that's that's me done. Um, <laughs> yeah, I won't be around too much longer now. Fine. <laughs> It just gets a little bit chilly. Yeah. Do you want me to, um, do you want me to get Carol to come and pick you up? No. No, we'll walk back to the car. Well, no, because she likes to laugh. He couldn't it. handle the shame. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, anybody else? <laughs> you had your moment. Oh, no, mate. No, hey, you've been had been your a moment. Long time. Mike's, Mike's little, little idea. It was like you had a, just had a little lie down. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take any more. Can't take any more. That's it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't well, care. Now it's just wet. Yeah. 
as opposed to sloshing about. Yeah, I'm not sloshing anymore. Look at that. I, 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 I normally leave it in there because eventually it warms up. Yeah. It warms up and then you walk around with warm water. Wetsuit. Yeah, see, that's, that's the way for it. Let's put it in the expert. I have to take batteries to the scrap yard. Yeah. And he's to empty the battery out and fill them up with water. Yeah, this is 